Oh, welcome. Welcome to the Alakus podcast, and this is class number 26 in the discourse. This is class number 26 in the discourse um, of Oita Arka Salma, which is the second discourse in the book of Bishashe Hekdimu, and, and we are nearing the very end of the discourse, holding towards the end of chapter 8, Perikhas. So yesterday we were talking about a, a, how he, you know, after the main theme of the discourse in which he discussed the difference between the vessels and the lights, uh, and explained how um, this is the world, the world of Atzilus, acts as a mediator and it has properties of the two sides of the mediation and as is regarding the Torah again since this was a Shavuos Mimer a, a, a discourse set on Shavuos in which is the, we celebrate the giving of the Torah as mentioned yesterday he, he's connecting it to Torah itself and to the giving of the Torah how in Torah and in Torah itself there is also the two properties, the properties of the world and the properties of God in the Torah. In other words, when we look in the Torah, we can find the godly side of Torah and the and the um and the worldly side of Torah. And what he's really going to mention is that it that's the extroteric part of the Torah and the esoteric part of the Torah, what we refer to as Panimia Satorah, the inner light of the Torah, the soul of the Torah. And that is the godly um, aspect of the Torah. And when you learn that side of Torah, you're coming face to face with God in a very open, revealed way. And, but on the other hand, the Torah also has the side of the Torah that is the extroteric part of the Torah, which deals with the practical aspects of life, guiding life in accordance to God's will. But it's instructions about worldly things. And and from that, on that end of the Torah, the Torah is. Um, communicating with the world and exhibiting properties of the world itself. So we began learning yesterday the concept that the Torah is a mediator. A mediator between what? Between Hashem and the world. Where do we find that? So we learned, let's let's read again these words over again. When you do it is known. The Torah, the Torah, the Torah is also a mediator between the infinite one and the Olamos to the world. In other words, just like in the worlds itself, in the process of evolution, of the evolution of the worlds itself, the spiritual world, worlds act as a mediator between, between Hashem and the physical world. And within the spiritual world, the main med mediating world is Atzilus, because that's not just a spiritual world, but it's a world of divinity. So it translates the infinite light into the created realm, into this, even into the spiritual worlds. But Atzilus asks as a takes from one side and delivers to the other side. Um, so too, on a more general level, um, there is a there is a there is an entity that mediates in general between even the highest world. Even Atzilus needs a mediator to mediate into Atzilus. Who mediates into Atzilus from God Himself? That is the Torah. So the Torah acts as the mediator between, in general, between God and and the worlds and the worlds at large. And then in each world, if we look deeper, that world is preceded by the Torah of that world. And as before God emanates the world or creates a world, He first flows into the Torah of that world and from the Torah into the world. So the, there is a system of mediation taking place in the evolution of the worlds themselves. That's when we're looking how one world evolves from the next, right? From Atzilos evolves Bria, from Bria evolves Yetzirah, from Yetzirah evolves Asiya, right? From the world of emanation evolves the world of creation, from the world of creation evolves the world of formation, and from the world of formation evolves the world of... Uh, of, of completion in the material world. So in general, there is also another another evolution taking place. From God, in each level, God is emanating first the Torah of that world, and through the Torah, he creates that world. 
Uh, so in a sense, we might say the other way we were looking horizontally. This time, I mean um, vertically. This time we're looking a little bit horizontally. In front of each world, to emanate that world, there is first the Torah of the world. Now, where do we find that? Uh, because it says, come on, as it says in the Zohar, that Hashem looks in the Torah, and he creates the world. And we also have another statement the sages say, that the Torah says, re referencing herself, the Torah speaks about herself, I am, or I was, I am God's instrument and tool through which he creates the world. Now he's going to explain how that exists on each world. Now in each world, there is a Torah that precedes the creation of that world. So for example, he starts with the lowest world, that the, 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 the existence of all the material things of this world, everything. For example, you have inanimate objects, you have plants, you have um, animals, and you have humans. So all these things that exist in the material physical world, first there is a Torah about them. Like we see, Zoisa Torahs ha 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 um, like it says in uh, the Rashi calls it the Torah of the animals of the of what's kosher, what's not kosher of the animals. That's the Torah of the animal kingdom, and then there is a Torah about plants, all the agricultural laws pertaining to land and to the plants that grow. That's the Torah of the plants, and then there is the human Torah, Torah Sa Adam where Rashi refers to it in Psef of Ayikra about, you know, the purity of the human, the not the, when a per person is tam tar, they're talking about simply the, the physical anatomy of the human body is discussed with all of its laws of, 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 uh, of the, the, the Torah concepts relating to the human body. So this is the concept. Everything that exists, that will exist in the world, first is mapped out on a deeper level in the Torah. And therefore, he says, the kiyum kolad barama gashmiyim, and the the existence of all the coming, the the, sust, the sustaining power of all material things, and that's to continue to sustain them. The savusa me'ayin liyash, and they're coming into being from non-existence into existence. Hu al yadeya Torah, hu al yadeya Torah dasiya, is through the Torah of the practical world. Uh, shakal. Shekol Advarim, what meaning to say? Because that's not the only Torah, as we mentioned yesterday. There is a more there is a more esoteric Torah. That's not the Torah dealing with the physical world. That deals with angelic, spiritual beings, celestial beings. We're talking about the material Torah, dealing with the material world. Shekol Advarim Agashim Aksuvim B'Torah, because all the physical things that are mentioned in the Torah, Hemem Chiyusam B'Kiyumam, they are the actual life force and the existence of that thing. That's why we find that there were great tzaddikim, great holy saintly people, that when something was presented to them, a person needed a, a healing or uh, some other kind of a, of a miracle or some kind of an improvement in their physical material life, the tzaddik would look in the Torah or sometimes tell them a verse or something like that, and from there they would fix the problem. Because from the Torah, you can fix the problem. It even goes so far that there are cases where the rabbis um, argue particularly. There was one famous story, beautiful story. I'm not going to go to the details of the story, but just a little, little bit of a something. That there was once a person that had an illness and came to a, a tzaddik to pray for him. And the tzaddik told him to move. Maybe it was even the Alter Rebbe. He told him to move out of the town where he is and go to live in a different country, in a different place. And then he had a refua. He was healed. And the question then became, um, why? What was the point of it? Why did he tell him to move there? And why? How did that bring a refua? Well, didn't he didn't tell him to go to some medical center or start taking what was it? Just a change of weather or whatever. So the answer that later the tzaddik gave was because this person was dealing with a certain defect in his body, that there is an argument amongst the rabbis if this is considered a a um, fatal injury in an animal or not something called trefa. Trefa is a fatal injury. So there was an argument. And the rabbi of the town that I sent him to is of the opinion that that's not a fatal or, uh, 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 injury. So when I, even though this person had, a, had a, what would generally be considered a fatal, a fatal disease, but he was under the jurisdiction of the rabbi who held it was that this is, this is considered fatal according to Torah. So I sent him to a place where the rabbi's 
uh, um, 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 who, who has jurisdiction over that city wrote, and maybe even the rabbi is not alive then, he was alive 100 years ago, but he in that city where he had jurisdiction, he gave a halachic, halachic uh, a decision that this is not considered a fatal injury in an animal, and therefore the animal is kosher if we would. So in that case, it would apply to the human as well. So you see from there that the sustaining and the 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 upkeep and obviously and also the, even the creation of everything in the world follows the Torah. Now, even though you're going to say, well, according to that, we would if everything should have been everything needs to be spelled out in the Torah. There should be every flower and every insect and every animal and every species of tree or plant or should all be in the Torah. And we know the Torah doesn't mention the Torah mentions just generalities. So he says, V'yash Mem Shonem Barem is really everything is hinted to in the Torah. Just some of those things are hidden and we have to find them. They're there in the manners of exchanging of letters, as explains in Tanya, that certain letters are 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 um, are flipped and uh, there is an exchange of letters. And that that's where really every single species of every little creature, everything in the world, every type of being is mentioned in the Torah. And this is where this is where we're actually these words we were all yesterday, the, the last few words we read quickly, the last couple of lines. So I went back a little bit, but here's where we were actually holding. That's what the sages also say. The words of the sages, Bahove. They speak in the usual. Now, the regular meaning of this, now we're going to have an, a, a beautiful insight into what the sages say. Because Again, let's understand. We're learning the esoteric elements of the Torah over here. So we're going to get esoteric explanations and very deep explanations for statements of the sages that generally were were and always were understood on a much simpler level. And what we learn over here is that we get a much deeper insight on what the sages really meant. So, for example, there is a statement in the sages which say it, there's a rule in regarding Torah regarding the statements of the rabbis that say that when the rabbis gave a certain example, when they said, let's say, the law in this and this case, or the law is so-and-so, is they were speaking about the more usual case. In other words, they didn't, there were, there were always cases that are outside of the usual, but when the pages you mention something, they're usually speaking in language of regular occurrences. That's the simple meaning. Dibre Chachamim, the rabbi spoke Bahove in a usual experience, not in an unusual, outlandish event. Fine. The deeper meaning he explains. Dibre Chachamim, this is now what we're going to learn his interpretation. Dibre Chachamim, the words of the wise, Bahove, Hove means in the beingness, which means their words create beingness. They decide the beingness of the world, how the world should be follows the follows the, the words of the rabbis like we talk, like has been proven in the story that I mentioned earlier that when the rabbis decide law they're actually changing and influencing the dynamics of the material physical world meaning that the rabbis are speaking to the existence to the coming into being of the worlds now this is the Torah of our physical world. There is a Torah in every world. Torah is not, Torah is multi-layer, just like we learned there's many worlds evolving from each other. The Torah also evolves from world to world. But Torah is a much deeper evolution and a much and, and a far more inner dimension. And worlds are the external. That's why the Torah from each world creates the external part, which is the world. So there's a Torah in area. For example, there is a Torah in the world of Yetzirah, which is a world above our world. And there's a Torah in the world of Bria. And there's a Torah in the world of Atzilus. And so on high. Which through the Torah of every world, is the drawing forth and the connection of the infinite one into that world. Now, now he's, he's going to make a what seems to be a parenthetical statement over here, but an important statement, and that is, now that we've established that in the worlds itself there are something there are these mediating worlds, right? Like we said, Atzilus is a mediator between the Ein Sof and the worlds and the creations, and then we're saying that Torah is also a mediator, but there's a major difference between 
the, medi the mediation of Torah versus the mediation of a world. When one world stands as a transporter, as a transitioner from a higher level to a lower level, the, me the mediator itself acts as a certain interruption. It receives, and what it passes on to the next world is not what it received. It doesn't, it, it doesn't transmit essence. It transmits only a ray. So when worlds evolve one world from the other, it's always a ray from a ray from a ray. Things are continuing. That's what a trans. That's what a translator uh, does. If I'm translating from English to Spanish, then I'm allowing the concepts, the thoughts that were in English, to be carried over into a whole different language to people who speak a different language to communicate these ideas. However, we always know that whenever you're translating something, something gets lost in the translation. And that means what comes over on the other side is a mere reflection of what was. Take a piece of poetry and translate it into another language. It's not easy to translate it perfectly. A lot gets lost in its translation. So the same as when God uses a world to translate from one world to the other, it's only a ray that goes from world to world. However, the Torah is an awesome communicator. The Torah is an, is an, an incredible, um, it's, um, mediator because it captures the essence and then it transmits the essence onward. And that's why in order to bring the essence of God into the world, worlds themselves will only have a ray of God. And when it, as they evolve, the ray gets less and less and less in order to capture the, and, and to retain, to capture and to return re, to, and to retain and to transmit from world to world, the substance of, of Hashem, that only comes through the Torah. Amamutza, the Torah, and the mediator of Torah, is not like the mediation of the worlds. When the world emanates from world to world, it doesn't capture the essence. only a ray. however, in Torah, the intermediator is not a interruption, doesn't block. It, it, it's able to receive and transmit further without keeping anything for itself. That's how powerful the Torah is. And that's why the essence of God gets communicated via the Torah into the world. As stated elsewhere. Now you're going to ask the question, and this was what was bothering me when I was learning this. If we're saying that the Torah is a communicator of essence, but the worlds themselves are just an evolution of rays, so how is it that since when God created the world, God used the Torah as the mediator, as the instrument, like we said, the tool. So the essence should have been then transmitted into the world. So how is it that the, that, that the worlds don't have the essence of God, only the rays of God, and only through our service do we bring the essence? What I was thinking is that when he says the Torah acts as a transmitter of the essence, primarily the Torah when we study it. And, it, and, and, and there, is, there is proof to this. It says in Hasidus that the Torah before the Torah was given was only a ray of God. But once the Torah was given, when God came to Mount Sinai, he said, I am God, your God. That is when God infused his essence into the Torah. And therefore, when we study Torah, so there is the Torah as it acted as a, as a mediator from the very onset of existence through the Torah, God created the world. But that itself is not yet a communication of essence. And then when God gives the Torah and we, the Jewish people, study the Torah and learn the Torah, then we transmit the essence of God through the medium of Torah into the world. Again, I'm not sure on that, but that's just the way I'm, I, I think that's, that, that's the explanation. As we said it elsewhere, notwithstanding the fact that Torah does not filter and Torah takes the essence and communicates. However, the Torah still has to be a mediator. In other words, the world would never be able to receive the essence of the divine without the Torah. That means there is some effect that the mediation accomplishes. You know, usually a mediator, the reason they can mediate is because they slow down the transmission. They're not giving it, or that's how they're able to transmit from one level to the next level. Now, the Torah, we're saying, is not really an interrupter. It passes things through as it is. 
But if it would be passing things through as it is completely without interrupting, why do you need it? Then how? Then it's not serving any function. If it's not, if it's not in any way affecting. So it seems like it is doing something. It's it's enabling it to pass, although it's transmitting the essence. It is through a mamutz. Vaha mamutza, mamutza meaning in the mediator, call him a beza madregos. Now, as we said earlier, if Torah is acting as a mediation, as a transporter from God to each world, to create the world and to sustain the world, the mediator needs to have a language, has to have a form of identification to identify with both sides in which it's mediating. Like we said in Atzilus, it exhibits infinity and it exhibits limitation due to the Oires and the Kalim. So the same is the mediation of the Torah. The Hamamutza kolm abeza madregois and the Mamutza and the Torah too has must have a more godly side and a more earthy side. Vu Indian, and that's the idea of Pinimia Satora, the Chitzonia Satora. That's the idea of the two levels of the Torah. The internal part of the Torah which is the the inner the inner soul of the Torah or the esoteric element of the Torah, of Chitzon Torah, and the external part of the Torah, which is called the body of the Torah or the garment of the Torah, as we're going to see soon. The Chitzon Torah, because for behold, the 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 extraterric part of the Torah, the the law of the Torah, the stories of the Torah, as they speak about worldly things, that is very much comes about in a limited fashion. Kamoi elu trefais. Ah, he's actually talking about the laws of Torah that I was mentioning earlier. Elu trefais means these injuries of an animal deem the animal being not kosher, what we call a treif, not kosher. Beilu ksherois. And if the animal had this injury, we find that this is usually the way it's usually done is after an animal is slaughtered, you always do an inspection in the internal organs to make sure that the animal did not was not inflicted by a certain injury, a person, an injury that could possibly be is the animal eats straw and, and if the, in the straw there was a sharp object like a, a needle and my mistake the animal swallowed the needle the needle could puncture the lung and if that if they find something like that then that means that the animal is not kosher even if you found that only after the animal was dead because you assume that it was alive it had already this puncture and therefore it was a non-kosher and it was not valid even if it got a kosher slaughtering so there is a there's an entire section in Masechtas Chulin and tractate Chulin that deals with the an- physical anatomy of an animal and all the injuries, where and what kind of injury to the various different parts of the bodies are considered um, severe that they deem the animal not kosher. So that is the laws. And over there, over there, there's exact measurements and limitations. Everything is spoken about in a very limited fashion about, about the laws of very very defined with very spe- specific and detailed aspects. Now, even though this is the Torah, which is divine, but the Torah has kind of transported itself to talk about a limited finite world. Uh, and so that's the side of the Torah that represents the world. That's from the side of the worlds, which are limited. However, which is not the case with the esoteric part of the Torah. <clears throat> For example, what we are learning over here in the last 46 classes of the Lakus podcast, the subject matter is the divine. The subject matter is the infinity. <laughs> So the, because we're dealing with the abstract, it's infinite. So for those of you who, fin- who think we're going to finish this discourse, <laughs> it's infinite. It's boundless. We're going to explore and explore and explore for on forever with God's help. doesn't have a measure. It doesn't have a limit. Like it says, This is a midrash. I think it's a midrash rabba. It says everything in this world has an end. Chutzmah Torah. Besides the Torah, everything has a limit. Besides the Torah, she'em sikus that doesn't have an end. So in the discourses, it explains that when we say that the Torah doesn't have an end, it's referring to the soul of the Torah. The body of the Torah does have an end, and you can actually learn the entire body of the Torah. 
There are there's something called a person who studied Kala Torah Kula that studied the entire Torah. Yep. You learn the Talmud, Yerushalmi, Bavli, whatever it is, Jerusalem, and you learn the the the, the, the main primary um, Rishonim, Achronim, which we call the early commentators. Later, the the Shas Bavli, the 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 Shulchan Aruch, the Code of Jewish Law, with all the various levels of it, and and you kind of get to study. Of course, Rambam, you get to learn the entire body of Torah. And that has an end. However, when we say Torah doesn't have an end, it means the inside of the Torah. The Haino Primius Torah, which is the Primius of the Torah. Over there we say it's Arukam Eretz Mida. Its measurement is longer than the earth. It's, in, it's infinite. Why? Because that's the godly side of Torah. That's the infinite light that's shining in the Torah. Which is limitless. And this is what it says. The mimer begins, the whole name of the discourse is, he wraps himself with light like a garment. So what does it mean, light and garment? So he's explaining that light and garment are referring to Torah. God himself wraps himself in the garment, which is Torah. He wraps himself in light like a garment. But what, is the, what, what does it mean, light and garment? Those are the two parts of the Torah. The light is the inside of the Torah, the infinity of the Torah, and the garment is the more external part of the Torah as it faces the world. The light of the Torah is the Torah as it's facing God, receiving from God, a vessel, to, it's, re, it's taking in the infinite. We might say the input that's going into the Torah from God and the 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 uh, garment of Torah is the output where Torah is trans transmitting to the world in a in a finite limited manner. Shembeis madregas oir. These are the two levels of light. I'm sorry. Shembeis madregas. These are two levels. Oir rup chenas apnimias. Light. This is the internal part. Chenas oir in seif shebet Torah, which is the limitless light of the Torah. The salma and the garment. Who chenas is chitzonius a Torah, which is the external part of the Torah which is a cover. Here is where Torah is hiding the godliness of it. That's what a garment is. A garment hides the person that's wearing it. Main purpose of a garment, you see, by Adam was to cover his, his body, to conceal him. So the external part of the Torah conceals that it's infinite. One can study the body of the Torah and forget that this is an infinite teach, an infinite light it's, 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 that God himself is, is, is radiating over here. The Salmo Chitzani Yisatayra is the garment of Torah, the external part of the Shubchan is Lavush, which is a garment, Hamayla Mesa'or, that conceals the light. Now it's very important to have a concealer, because if the Torah was to come down to the world just from its es esoteric internal light, it would burn the world, the world would never be able to receive it. But since it, 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 it adjusts itself through the garment of the Torah, which is the laws of the Torah, that can speak more of a limited language, that's how it can be received by the world without, without destroying them. That the world should have the capacity to be able to receive. Okay, get ready. The next class, with God's help, is going to be the siyum, the conclusion. And the Rebbe said that in the nine days we should make siyums on a masach. This is not a masachna, but for us, this was a good siyum. Bez Hashem, class number 27 is going to be the conclusion of the second discourse. Meanwhile, let Mashiach come before.